Alright. So let's try Laplace transform of sine of a t. Because I, I, last time I gave you the Laplace transform of sine t and cosine t without proof. I want to show you how this thing is computed. And this was interesting because it requires a uh, integration by parts twice in a strange way. I'm going to use tabular, but uh, you run into an integral that you may have struggled in calc 2. So let's first write down the definition. E, it, it's uh, 0 to infinity of E to the negative ST times F of T dt, where this F of T now is a sine of a T dt. Now this requires, it, it's a product of two functions. And uh, You should either do integration by parts twice or tabular. You have to stop at the third line. And either way, it's not a trivial integration. That's why I want to show you this. Okay. So I put sine a t here, and then uh, e to the negative s t here. And you keep a is some constant. If you differentiate this, you get uh, a cosine a t. Differentiating this again, you get negative a squared sine a t plus minus plus. And you want to stop when you get the same sine a t again. Okay? Now let's integrate. Again, on this side, you have to think of s as some constant. So if you integrate it's negative 1 over s e to the negative s t, integrating again it gives you 1 over s squared e to the negative s t. And uh, <coughs> now the reason I stopped here is because there's no hope for getting a zero if you keep going on. So I, it, it just repeats sine and cosine and never becomes zero. Uh, so what, what I did was I stopped when I saw the same thing appearing again. Okay? Now you might wonder uh, how you can handle this, but you'll see. Okay? All right, so the integral result is, is this, the following. If I do that, that gives you uh, negative 1 over s e to the negative s t times sine a t. And then into going this way, it gives you a negative 1 over s squared e to the negative s t times a cosine a t. And then, uh, so far, all the tabular integration that I showed you only had zero at the end. So this, this last thing that we do didn't do anything. But for this, it's really important. If you multiply this, you get uh, negative a squared over s squared e to the negative st. So going this way, you get this, and then sine at. And the last line should be integrated. That's what you have to take the last line and integrate with the same boundary. OK, now let's see what this is really saying. It's saying that this integral is same as this plus this plus that. So let's write this out. 1 over s e to the negative st sine a t plus negative 1 over s squared e to the negative s t, oh, there's an a here, a cosine a t. And both of these you have to evaluate at infinity and 0. And then you also have that integral. Let, let's, let's move this out, outside. If you pull that outside, it's negative a squared over s squared integral of 0 to infinity of e to the negative st sine a t dt. OK. Let's see what our achievement is. So you started trying to integrate this. 
Uh, is there a mistake here? No. Is it A squared? Which top. one's A squared? On the top is A squared. Yeah. Top Ooh, one is. Cool. is that's A, that's right. That's okay. Yeah. This is A, that's A squared. Real yes. oh, quick, how'd you know to do uh, it only three times again? Oh, uh, you just have to know. That's that's the, that's that's why this is non-trivial. This is a non-trivial thing. So yes. you just go back until you get to the same. Yeah, yeah. So you you again, it yeah. You, for for again. for the case when you integrate exponential with the trig functions, you move on until you hit the same function again. So this is the same. So you stop right here. So and it doesn't matter that there's the negative. It doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, is it? Um, would you just keep going until you can cancel out the, the initial interval? Yeah, that that's basically what we're trying to do. Yes. You may have seen this in calculus too. Yes. Okay. All right. So. Uh, so. Let, let's see what what what's our achievement here. You started out by saying, "Oh, I need to integrate this," and the answer says it should be this and another integral, but wait, isn't this the same integral as what we started with? Add it to the other side. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but, but the irony is that in the first, first sight, at the first sight when you see this, it's like you didn't achieve anything at all because you start with the question and your answer contains the question. So it, it, it feels like you, didn't, you did all this work to get, a, get an answer which doesn't do, doesn't say anything, but then uh, the the trick is to actually say that, think of this as an equation for this integral, and so you move this to the other side, and you get the following. It's uh, uh, if I just call this as i, just as a short end, okay? So it's i, and then this thing moved to the other side is plus a squared over s squared times i, right? This is a, th this thing times i, right? If I call this as i, and that's the i, i for integral. That's what I have on the left side. Whereas on the right side, we have this thing, negative one over s e to the negative s t sine a t. I'll just copy everything down. And it's minus a over s squared e to the negative s t cosine a t and you're plugging it infinity in zero. Okay, so if you treat this as an equation, now you have something to solve for. See, this one, you can factor the i out, and that gives you one plus a squared over s squared, where on the right side, uh, let's see, if you plug in infinity, what do you get for these? Zero. You, plug it, you get zero because you're treating s as some positive number. So e to the negative infinity, that gives you zero, zero. These are oscillating, so they don't grow, grow at all. So this one will be zero because that's zero, that's zero. If I plug in zero, what sign of zero? Zero. Zero. So the only thing that doesn't give you zero is? <coughs> that term. This one, right? What do you get? Minus <laughs> plus. OK, so it's uh, because because you're, it's, it's this sign, I need to subtract. It subtracts negative a over s squared e to the zeroth power times cosine of zero is? One. One. Which is just uh, a over s squared. Isn't that right? Negative, negative is positive. E to the zero is one. One times one is one. So that's all you get. All right. So all I have to do now is to evaluate this integral. Now I just have to solve for i. And that's it, right? Uh, since I don't like fractions, let's just multiply s squared both sides. Okay? If I multiply s squared to this and also to that, s squared times 1 is s squared. s squared times this thing is a squared. If I have a bunch of products and I, I'm multiplying it, I only have to multiply to one of the products, right? Uh, a, b, c. If I have a times b, c, that same as a, b times c, right? So I'm only multiplying this to the first one. This is called associativity, if you didn't know. So that's all I have on the left side. On the right side, a s squared times this, s squared, s squared cancels, leaving you with what? A. Therefore, i is equal to a 
If I divide by s squared plus a squared both sides, I get a over s squared plus a squared. And that is what we call the Laplace transform of, uh, what, which one, uh, sine 18. That's what it is. Right. Do you have any questions? Do you want me to explain anything again? Then just any part of this? Just regular sine t would just be s over 1 plus right. s Right, that's a, that's a good question. Okay, so last time I claimed that Laplace transform of sine t is 1 over, but uh, this, this contains that result, right? If, what's the Laplace transform of sine t according to this? Sine t is a sine 1 t, so a is 1. So if you plug in 1 here and 1 here, you get 1 over s squared plus 1, exactly as I said last time. Okay, any other questions? No. Okay. Do I press it?